Australia is known for its laid-back lifestyle and stunning landscapes. But did you know it's also the emptiest developed country on Earth? That's right, 95% of this sun-drenched continent remains uninhabited. In this video, we'll uncover why most of Australia remains empty. Stay tuned until the end to explore something truly shocking. Australia, with its vast expanse of approximately 3 million square miles, stands as the sixth largest country globally regarding land area. However, its population is relatively sparse, with just over 26 million inhabitants. To put this into perspective, consider that states like California and Texas in the United States each have larger populations than the entirety of Australia. Australia has five major cities huddled up on the coast, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, and Adelaide. Most Aussies call these cities home, in fact, about two-thirds of them are packed into these urban centers. But did you know that while 90% of Australians live it up in these bustling cities, they only take up a tiny 0.22% of the country's massive area? Most of the land down under is just sitting there, waiting to be explored. Interestingly, around 85% of Australians are within a mere 31 miles of the coastline, reflecting a strong inclination toward coastal living. This coastal concentration contributes to the sparse population distribution across the country's vast interior. Regionals such as East Pilbara County in Western Australia exemplify this phenomenon with expansive territories harboring minimal human settlement. For instance, although East Pilbara County spans an area comparable to that of Japan, it houses just over 10,000 inhabitants, with the town of Newman hosting half of this population. So, why is Australia's population so spread out? Well, for starters, you've got the harsh Aussie outback to contend with. It's hot, it's dry, and it's not exactly the most welcoming place to set up camp. Plus, let's not forget about history. Instead of settling in the hard interior deserts, indigenous peoples lived along the coast and in fertile places before Europeans arrived. The first European colony was founded at Sydney in 1788 by Captain Arthur Phillip, signaling the start of British colonization. The southern and eastern coasts were the most popular locations for early colonists because of the favorable climate and plenty of resources in those regions. At its founding, Australia was a penal colony that molded its population by housing a large concentration of ex-convicts and military men in specific regions. And that's not all. About 40% of Australia's land has been drastically changed by humans since European settlers came along. Forests have been cleared, and the remaining areas have been left largely untouched, leading to the proliferation of weeds. Then there's Anna Creek. It's not a country or a state. It's a massive cattle ranch. It is what we call the king of ranches, sitting in an area bigger than Israel. But despite its vastness, there are only about eight full-time workers taking care of 10,000 cows. Moreover, you've got massive deserts stretching out as far as the eye can see. And no, we're not talking about those cozy sandy beaches. We're talking about deserts teeming with all sorts of creatures that could give you nightmares. Australia is also renowned for being home to some of the world's deadliest animals, adding another layer of danger to its remote and rugged landscapes. Now let's talk about population distribution in Australia, which is considered to be the worst. Why? Major cities like Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane are located on the coast, offering economic opportunities, cultural amenities and favorable climates. These cities attract the majority of Australia's population due to their connectivity, high standard of living, and job prospects. Key industries such as finance, technology, and manufacturing are concentrated in urban centers, providing employment opportunities. Also, Australia's position near Antarctica means it's constantly getting chilled out by cold currents. Plus, there's this thing called a rain shadow, caused by mountains, which basically means less rain for the inland areas. And without rain, you can forget about shopping in the middle of nowhere. Coastal areas often have milder and more temperate climates compared to the harsher conditions inland, which in turn affects the patterns of habitation. The reliability of their food supply is ensured by the fact that coastal regions are better suited for farming. Living on an island has a number of difficulties, such as a lack of infrastructure and exposure to harsh weather. The majority of Australians choose to reside in urban coastal areas due to the higher quality of life and greater economic opportunities, 
which is one reason why the interior regions of the country are relatively sparsely populated. Speaking of rain, most of it falls on the east coast of Australia, leaving the rest of the country feeling pretty parched. Northern Australia, in particular, gets its fair share of wild weather, with unpredictable tropical storms dumping buckets of rain one day and leaving everything bone dry the next. It's like Mother Nature's way of keeping things interesting. Let's not forget about water, or should I say the lack of it. Australia's river systems are like those tiny streams you see in the movies, compared to giants like the Mississippi. So, even if you wanted to live in the middle of nowhere, you'd have a tough time finding enough water to fill your bathtub, let alone water your crops. Australia's environment is in danger because droughts worsen environmental damage by reducing rainfall and water supplies. As temperatures rise, many places experience long, dry times that leave them thirsty for months. It is hard to support a big population because there isn't enough water, and the soil isn't suitable for farming. Uninhabited regions play a vital role in environmental conservation. These areas harbor diverse ecosystems and endangered species, providing sanctuaries for wildlife. National parks and protected areas conserve these environments while offering opportunities for ecotourism, benefiting local communities. Despite these conservation efforts, Australia faces environmental challenges. Intensive land use and deforestation have severely altered 40% of the continent's area since European settlement. Farming practices, water scarcity, and inefficient water usage contribute to environmental degradation and resource depletion. Apart from environmental problems, Australia's immigration laws also contribute to the country's small population. They have been more careful than the US, which has a history of welcoming many immigrants and industrialization. Throughout the 20th century, an average of 52,000 people migrated to Australia each year, and that number rose to over 350,000 in the 1990s. The population could have stabilized with this amount of immigration, but it would have taken several million more years to reach its maximum. But unlike the United States, Australia was hesitant to become an immigrant-driven industrial superpower. Up until the 1970s, when it began to limit non-white immigrants, the industrialized nation strictly enforced its white Australia policy, which limited immigration. It is now more difficult for unskilled migrants to get to Australia unless they marry an Australian citizen, as immigration is now dependent on work requirements. It's also important to think about local points of view. The indigenous people of Australia have a special relationship with the land and a special appreciation for its size. For thousands of years, they've managed their land in a sustainable way, sculpting landscapes with fire and making do in parched areas. For indigenous Australians, the spiritual and cultural value of remote locations is paramount to their culture and way of life. Did you know all these interesting facts about Australia before? Go and check out more of such mind-boggling information in our video about Tasmania, Australia's least populated state, and find out why nobody lives there.